Greetings, welcome to the channel. Today, I'm gonna talk about five red flag relationships that you should avoid. Stay tuned. The five red flag relationships that you should try to avoid are the dysfunctional, the emotionally unavailable, the emotionally unstable, the emotional roller coasters, and the rehab projects. So let's talk about each one. The dysfunctional. Getting into the relationship with a, with a person who is dysfunctional means getting into a relationship with someone who lacks awareness that their behavior in that relationship is toxic or unhealthy. For an example, let's say they talk to you disrespectfully or let's say that they put you through tests to prove your love so they may use other people in order to get you jealous to see if you love them they may set you up to see if you'll cheat on them they may also expect you to fight with them verbally or physically because that's how they feel love now a couple of the less common dysfunctional people prince or princess charming these are the people that seem to say and do everything perfectly. There's nothing wrong with them. In fact, they are too good to be true. It's almost like they're from a fairy tale, which is a big clue that they're dysfunctional. Another type of action that dysfunctional people may have is that they may be providing privileges way too early in a relationship. Maybe they come to you on the first date and they're ready to be exclusive. Maybe they're experiencing love at first sight. Maybe they want you to move in with them. Maybe they wanna have children with you. Maybe they wanna get married after only a couple of dates. Maybe they can't live without you. If you look at their history, you'll find there's a history of a lot of failed marriages, a lot of failed relationships, maybe even a ton of baby mamas and baby daddies because with every relationship, they feel that that person is the one, so they went on ahead and had children with them. The challenge with dating someone who's dysfunctional is that you're gonna be dealing with generational curses. So if you check the family, you'll find that a lot of that dysfunction is spread out throughout the family dynamic. With that said, you have to remember that someone who's dysfunctional, they believe that their behavior is normal. Even though that behavior may be toxic and unhealthy to you, it is still normal for them. So, because dysfunctional people see their behavior as normal and not unhealthy or toxic, if you try to come in and change that dynamic, you try to come in and change that status quo, guess who's seen as having the problem? You are. And if you're seen as the one having a problem, guess who's gonna have to go? The emotionally unavailable. If you're dealing with somebody who's emotionally unavailable, you're dealing with somebody who's dealing with some serious trauma in the past. They've placed a wall around their heart and it's there because of past traumas. Maybe they got lied to one too many times. Maybe they got cheated on one too many times. Maybe they got betrayed one too many times. Regardless, there's trauma there, and because of that trauma, they're not willing to let you in. Since they're unwilling to let you in, this also means that they are unwilling to invest in you emotionally. So maybe you've been working with them, you've been trying to get to know them, but for some reason they just keep holding back. Well, that's because they're emotionally unavailable. So the emotionally unavailable will give little if any reciprocation of all the emotion that you pour into them. So they may do very little hand-holding or they may not even tell you they love you. You may ask them about their day every day. However, when you wanna tell them about your day, usually it's met as a chore to sit there and listen to how your day went on. The challenge with dating somebody who's emotionally unavailable is that you will never be in a committed relationship. Why? Because they will never fully commit or fully attach to you. They are unavailable. You will end up feeling like a therapist, a life coach, or a cheerleader. And at the end of the day, they will feel better. You will feel drained. The emotionally, the emotionally unstable. unstable. So, the emotionally unstable are people who are unable to control their emotions effectively. 
What it is is they have a problem with maturity. So when you're dealing with the emotionally unstable, it's kind of like you're dealing with something from a toddler to a child to a teenager back to a toddler. Yeah, you go through those phases. So with the emotionally unstable, they can go from zero to 10 in a heartbeat. And it can be zero to 10 happiness or it can be zero to 10 badness. So when the emotionally unstable goes from zero to 10, that's where they have no filter. What happens is their thoughts, whether it be of anger or happiness, they come up, they come out verbally, so it can be words of happiness or words of anger, and then they're followed by action. So maybe they could buy something very nice for you, or they could also punch a wall. Now, another problem with the emotionally unstable is that they have no accountability. The emotionally unstable will always play the blame game. It will never be their fault. It will be your friend's fault, their friend's fault, the kid's fault, the dog's fault, Monday's fault. It's always someone else's fault. Also, the emotionally unstable may be seen as a leader or may be seen as a protector because they are willing to not take anything off of anybody. And they are like uh, weapons of mass destruction that you can point at a situation or point at a person, hit a button and watch them fly off. The emotionally unstable are risk takers with little to no regards of consequences. They don't care about the consequences to family, friends, the public, authorities, to themselves. Because they care little to none, about the consequences of their behavior, it's not uncommon for the emotionally unstable to have a lot of run-ins with the law. For the emotionally unstable, they have no problems breaking boundaries. Authority and rules are merely obstacles that are to be overcome. They're also inconveniences. So it's not uncommon for them to bend or break rules. Even when it comes to relationship rules, you'll find that the emotionally unstable is great at splitting hairs, lies of omission, white lies, finding the exception to the rule. They're good at that, why? Because once again, no accountability. It's always someone else's fault that they behave the way they behave. The challenges with dating someone who's emotionally unstable, you have to understand that the emotionally unstable lives with a light, dark philosophy. That means they either love you or they hate you. You're either with them or you're against them. And this philosophy is applied to everyone in their life. It's applied to their friends. It's applied to their family. Even those family members who can calm the emotionally unstable down when they go off on a rage. And it's also applied to you. So that means at some point, even though you may be in the light philosophy of the emotionally unstable's life right now, eventually you will be in the dark side. And when you're in the dark side, dark things can happen to you. So if you're going to date the emotionally unstable, you need to get familiar with the court system because all of that plays a role in the life of an emotionally unstable person. The emotional roller coasters. When you're in a relationship with an emotional roller coaster, they blow hot and they blow cold and they blow hot again. So uh, emotional roller coasters are unpredictable. Yes, they are the life of the party. Yes, they are incredibly fun to be around. However, you need to know that if you're in a relationship with one, just like a roller coaster, your relationship is gonna have ups and downs, twists and turns. Your relationship is gonna be filled with excitement, fun, fear, and nausea. You're going to experience sadness, fear, elation, confusion, guilt, betrayal, admiration, curiosity, anguish, madness, pride, anger, and sometimes you're gonna experience those on a weekly basis. So why is your relationship with an emotional roller coaster so unpredictable? Well, that's because emotional roller coasters live in and live for drama. That's right, emotional roller coasters love drama. They love family drama, they love your friend's drama, they love their friend's drama, they love the kid's drama, they love your drama. If you believe an emotional roller coaster should really mind their own business, what you don't understand is that with an emotional roller coaster, 
everybody's business is their business. They thrive on drama. So the challenge of dating an emotional roller coaster is that you have to realize that life for them can be a little boring and they need drama to help them feel alive. So emotional roller coasters are your drama kings and your drama queens. So if their family's not providing drama and your family's not providing drama and the outside world isn't providing drama, they will create drama in the relationship to feel alive. Uh, wait, did you forget to take out the trash? You, you didn't take out the trash. Oh my God, you don't love me. How could you be so cruel? Why would you treat me like this? Are you trying to break up with me? Is, is that what you're doing? Would that make you happy if you were to break us up? What, what about me? What about my feelings? Why is this happening? Well, that's all for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I put out a new one and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.